we are going to cover an important topic. I would consider that this is the most important topic in today's analog electronics. The reason will become obvious to you as we go. Let us therefore uh, start with what we have done in the earlier lecture, 26th lecture. Q enhancement of passive RC using negative and positive feedback was the topic of discussion because the passive RC network was using uh, low Q block because it cannot increase the Q above half that we had shown. How to improve the Q above half for a variety of designs that we require in filters. So that was the topic. Then effect of the most important parameter of the active device whether it is op amp or transistor is the gain bandwidth product. In the case of uh, transistor it is gm by c product. So which actually gives the quality of the active device. So what is the effect of this act active parameter on the performance of the filter that was also discussed in the earlier class. We had started with low pass passive RC second order and using negative feedback with the inverting amplifier of gain K obtained omega naught the normalizing frequency of the second order system as omega P the normalizing frequency of the passive filter which is for R1 equal to R2 equal to R and C1 equal to C2 equal to C is 1 over RC into square root of 1 plus K. K is the gain of the inverting amplifier. Q active is going to be Q passive which is equal to half for equal resistors and equal capacitor situation um, at most or in actual practice right if you do not use a buffer stage between the two passive networks it is 1 over 3 into square root of 1 plus k. So this is the enhancement of q by a factor of root of 1 plus k that was achieved through negative feedback. And then starting with the high pass passive RC second order the same negative feedback situation in the embedded system resulted in omega naught being equal to omega p which is 1 over RC divided by square root of 1 plus k. Q active remain same as before Q passive into square root of 1 plus k. Both low pass plus high pass resulting in a notch output in the passive RC if used in the same embedded system with negative feedback using inverting amplifier of gain K resulted in omega naught remaining same as omega P which is 1 over RC and Q active becoming equal to Q passive into 1 plus K QP. So band pass passive filter RC passive feedback. Now band pass if it is taken as the basis of the passive filter network RC network then in order to achieve Q enhancement to decrease the coefficient of S one has to resort to positive feedback and use a non-inverting amplifier of gain K. Then omega naught again remains same as omega P which is 1 over RC Q active is equal to QP by 1 minus KQP. So low pass plus high pass with negative feedback or band pass with positive feedback we have omega naught remaining same as omega P only the Q is enhanced. So these seem to be uh, uh, sort of 
possibility of independent adjustment of omega p and q which is required in design of filters. However, the bandpass filter with positive feedback results in uh, high sensitivity to k as far as q is concerned because k into q p has to be pretty close to 1 in order to um, make the gain, uh, q get enhanced. So, that is the only disadvantage of this positive feedback situation. So, it is normally used for low q applications. Negative feedback it has low sensitivity to k, but sensitivity to gain magnetic product uh, is high that is uh, it is sensitive to uh, the gb. In the case of uh, uh, third technique that is negative feedback with the notch the sensitivity is pretty low even to the gain bandwidth product. Even for 4 the sensitivity is low because k required is itself low for high q realization. So, independent q adjustment and omega naught adjustment not possible in the case of negative feedback low pass prototype we had seen that q gets enhanced by q a divided by n minus q a into total phase lag error in the loop ok. So, that means actually in uh, the earlier situation we had seen that this is equal to ok nothing but 2 k since we used uh, gain of 2 k for the uh, inverting amplifier stage. So, the phase error was 2 k into s by that is g b which resulted in omega naught by g b as the phase error okay, into q a. So, that is the net phase lag error in the loop. So, that caused enhancement of the q by this much. So, we had to select the again magnet product properly in order that this quantity is very small compared to 1. That is why f naught into q a product is a criteria for uh, low sensitivity to g b of q a. q a into delta phi should be much less than 1. In the case of uh, high pass feedback this becomes plus because there is a phase lag of negative value that means phase lead error ok. In the case of notch there is 0 phase error. So, this is the easy technique to remember how uh, g b determines the q enhancement in these feedback enhancement techniques. Now, let us start with state variable filters. What are these state variable filters? These are popularly uh, filters derived starting with state space synthesis techniques. These are also known as biquad filters, double integrator filters, KHN filters, Kerwin Hiltzman, I think. In this one, yes, oh. Newcomb uh, filters, universal active filters, they are manufactured as universal active filter blocks. Even in IC design, this is a basic building block. Of filters in VLSI analog VLSI. So, we have to study in detail about the synthesis technique as well as understand the performance of these filters 
uh, starting from synthesis. Active filter design as a solution of differential equation. That's some topic that has been taught uh, as early as tube electronic days when analog computer was there, right? So this has the origin with analog computers. What are these analog computers? The present students may not know about these computers existing as a tool for simulating uh, differential equations linear or nonlinear, and that is a system design concept which used to be used for by uh, analog uh, people as well as uh, aeronautics and uh, mechanical engineers in simulating their uh, mechanical electromechanical systems okay and uh, it was common practice to use this tool called analog computer what they, it, it comprised of it comprised of integrator blocks and summing blocks and multipliers so it used to have these as the blocks integrators summing amplifiers and multipliers. So uh, resistors and uh, capacitors form the integrators okay summing amplifiers multipliers are the necessary blocks of the analog computer. It used to be a full fledged course in uh, electrical engineering particularly in control systems for uh, control system simulation it used to be used often. Later on with transistors the size of the analog computer came down drastically and then uh, the op amp was the block that was used as the active device for building all these blocks. So today op amps uh, IC op amps are commonly available and the cost of this analog computer has come down considerably but it no longer exists as an IC it exists in the form of universal active filter block. So let us see how synthesis can be done of such filters. Nth order differential equation means synthesis of nth order filter. So we have a nth order differential equation linear differential equation written in terms of output voltage and input voltage. So this is the nth differential of output voltage uh, uh, and this is the input function. So these are the n minus 1 states which can be derived from the nth derivative using n number of integrators. Then this equation can be written with the highest order differential on the left hand side and rest brought to the right hand side this way. Then what does it say? If you have the highest order differential then n number of integrators can result in the n minus 1 lower state variables derived from the nth derivative and to that if you add vi appropriately by selecting appropriate coefficients that becomes equal to the left hand side. That means circuit wise once you have a uh, nth uh, differential and derived n minus 1 states you can sum up all these including the input using a summing amplifier and feed it back to the input that circuit realizes the nth order differential equation. So this used to be taught systematically in the earlier uh, electrical engineering courses 
and this equipment was part of most of the control labs, control system labs. However, with the advent of digital computers, all these simulations went over to digital computer and this course was removed from the curriculum unfortunately. However, circuits, electronic circuits, it has become an integral part of one of the topics discussed. However, this must be also becoming part of any common basic electronics course lab. Let us therefore see how first order filter can be synthesized with this approach. dv0 by dt plus k0 v0 is equal to ki vi is the first order differential equation in output uh, voltage and input voltage. This is now written as the highest differential dv0 by dt and one integrator will give you if the input is dv0 by dt, integration will give you v0 here. So, minus k v0 is got by the summing amplifier adding a suitable sign plus k i v i, you have v i and coefficient k i summing. So, this is nothing but dv0 by dt that is by closing this here you are actually simulating this equation. So, this is a loop feedback loop that comes into existence in order to solve this differential equation. So, we first assume that this exists and obtain the lower uh, differentials by using integrators and the summed up all these along with the input and got the output and then fed it back. So, <coughs> this if you realize using ideal integrators and summing amplifier using op amp let us say, you can get this characteristic at one of the outputs okay, low pass and this is high pass. So, actually you can see that this output is going to be high pass and integrated pass will result in low pass. So, this is the high pass output integrate you get low pass first order high pass and first order low pass are got as outputs of summing amplifier and the integrator. So, that is simulated using ideal integrator and ideal summing amplifier and one gets the characteristic like this. This can be shown to be uh, first order butterworth filter with cutoff frequency either for low pass or high pass same point that is why it is 707 times this 1. The transmission here is 1. This is also 1 and this is at point 707 that occurs at uh, roughly 1.59 for the values of uh, time constants that we have chosen 1.59 kilohertz. So, this is the plot. This is the uh, op amp realization of the same thing integrator R and C. So, the uh, integrator time constant is if this is V naught, this will be minus V naught by SCR, okay. this is adding V i to it. So, we have here inversion minus becomes plus V naught by SCR minus K naught into V i at this point this is V naught is equal to 1 inversion. So, minus V naught by S C R okay, plus K naught into V i that is the output V naught. So, V naught is equal to 
1 plus V naught into 1 plus omega naught by S omega naught being 1 by RC. So, this is equal to K naught into V i. So, V naught over V i becomes K naught S by omega naught divided by 1 plus S by omega naught. So, that is a uh, high pass filter function here. It is getting multiplied by minus omega naught by S. That means at this point one gets minus K naught by 1 plus S by omega naught. So, this is nothing but low pass filter function. So, these are the ones which are plotted uh, in the uh, characteristic that we have just now seen. Okay. Next let us try to do the same thing with a second order system. So, uh, now we are starting with d squared v naught by d t squared. So, we have that this is therefore 1 over RC okay, dv naught by dt integrated that is the uh, time constant that determines this integration. So, it is a positive integrator. So, then we have here 1 over RC squared into v naught. So, this is going to be summed up here with minus k 1 here ok. So, d squared v naught by dt squared plus k 1 dv naught by dt plus k naught v naught is equal to k v s same as before the first second order differential equation. This is the highest differential these are requiring two integrators to obtain the lower um, states. So, d squared v naught by dt squared is equal to minus k 1 dv naught by dt minus k naught v naught plus k i v i is what is done by the summing amplifier and that is equal to v naught itself uh, that is uh, d squared v naught by d t squared itself ok. So, we get that by connecting the output to the input feedback. So, the proced procedure for any order is the same. So, let us see how this when simulated ok using ideal integrators and then a summing amplifier results in only for the summing amplifier an op amp uh, summing amplifier is used other two are ideal integrators. So, we have the output now low pass. So, this is going to give you high pass here. this is going to be band pass once integrated low pass in the second order. So, if this is V naught let us say 1. So, this will be d V naught by d t 1 over or this is actually in terms of S domain nothing but S C R into V naught 1 and this will be V naught 1 by S C R square double integration. So, and this output V naught 1 therefore, is equal to the minus k 1 times this minus k naught times this minus plus k i times that. So, we will get here okay, the summation of actually S C R square S C R ok into V naught 1 to V naught 1 plus K i into V i which will result in V naught 1 by V i equal to K i 
S C R squared which can be written as S by omega naught squared divided by okay, S by omega naught squared plus S by omega naught q plus 1. If you collect all this coefficient where omega naught is equal to 1 by R C. And uh, it is the Q which is uh, determined by K naught. Okay, it's uh, one over K naught. Okay, is the Q. And this is what is simulated using ideal integrators and summing amplifier using op amp. We get we design the thing at f naught equal to 1.59 for a q of 5 and this is what is shown for the q of 5 you can see this this is nothing but the low pass goes to 0 as frequency goes on increasing very high compared to f naught at f naught it resonates so that is why it peaks at f naught okay and goes peaks slightly at a lower frequency than F naught okay and because it is low pass and as far as band pass is concerned it peaks at F naught exactly that is the resonant frequency. So, this is the band pass and this is the high pass goes to again a constant value at very high frequencies starts with 0 at 0 frequency that is the green color. So, this is the high pass, this is the band pass and this is the low pass characteristic. That is at this point it is peaking and the gain is h that is k i into q okay. That we will establish later when we consider these individual transfer functions. So, again go back here this is the point high pass is got this is the high pass integrate once you get only s by omega naught naught square because this is omega naught by s is the transfer function. So, um, this becomes band pass again integrated it becomes low pass. This is the phase characteristic of low pass starts with let us say uh, zero phase right goes on to 180 degrees at exactly this point there is 90 degree phase shift you know all these things right only thing is uh, additional phase shift of uh, high pass to low pass that is 180 degree phase shift right. So, you have that but phase variation is similar determined by the denominator polynomial numerator has a constant phase. So, uh, all the phase variations are remaining the same as determined by the denominator polynomial which is common to all the three. So, band pass right you have uh, this phase changing okay again this way. Okay. So, this is uh, actually I think 180 degree phase shift for the band pass occurring at omega naught you can see it is either 0 or 180 degree. Right? So, in this particular case it is 180 degree phase shift right? and then uh, the high pass and low pass are going to be 90 degree lag or lead around 180 or 0. Now, this is the transient response this shows you that the transient rem response remains the same okay for a, st a step function of voltage okay. 
So, a 100 millivolts step is given and that causes the thing to ring and the number of peaks countable the same method that we had adopted earlier in amplifier design as well as in filter design that you count the number of peaks go on up to one tenth this peak. So, you have 5 peaks which are countable indicating Q is equal to 5. So, the outputs remain the same in terms of ringing whether it is low pass, high pass or band pass. Indicating the characteristic equation is the one that determines the ringing. This is the realization using op amps. So, we have the first integrator followed by a next integrator with a summing amplifier. This is what is called the Q determining loop. This is known as one integrator, another integrator, a third inverter forming a loop. This loop is called a resonator block. Because if you disconnect this, the facility for adding dv0 by dt in the equation is removed. That means, it is something that contains only d squared v0 by dt squared plus k0 v0. If you do not have vi also added, if we break this loop here equal to 0. What is this? This is nothing but a harmonic equation. Solution of this is nothing but a sine wave right. This V naught is equal to some A sine root K naught into T. So, it produces a pure sine wave. It is a resonator block ok. Just see this. This is making the Q of the system infinity. If you remove this connection and not have input fed ok, input is grounded then this alone simulates this equation d squared v naught by dt squared plus k naught v naught equal to 0 which is why this is called a resonator block and this is called the Q forming loop. So, it just adds a coefficient of d v naught by dt to this that is all that k 1. This is the r k 1 that determines the q. This is q times r if you put that determines q. So, now this has been designed for 1.59 kilohertz as f naught and q equal to 5 this is the characteristic. This is what we had seen earlier with the ideal integrators also this is the op amp version this is the band stop filter. In all this simulation op amp has been given a model of just a voltage control voltage source of gain equal to 2000 that is all. As far as uh, the integrator op amps are concerned and the Q forming loop op amp only the summing amplifier is having the realistic op amp. So, that it can quickly simulate all this in uh, terms of simulation time etcetera it takes the least amount of time ok. So, this is the band stop filter output available at this point this is band stop. We will exactly give you the transfer function derived ok later ok. So, Q is 5 and now this is the phase plot and since we the phase plot for all the other outputs also other than the notch remain the same as the uh, other plots except the point at which it starts ok is going to be different for different outputs ok. They are all going to be quadrature difference that means 90 degree different ok. So, now this is for q equal to 1. 
this is for q equal to 5, this is q equal to 9. So, that re one resistance that determines q is changed from 1k to 5k to 9k and one can see how rapidly the q varies. This we had derived earlier, the slope here at f0 for uh, phase variation okay, delta phi by delta omega we have shown around omega equal to omega naught is equal to okay, minus 2 q by omega naught. This we had shown earlier for a second order system. Okay. That means the slope at this point depends upon the q. As q increases the slope increases. This fact about q variation around f naught is the one that is used for tuning of filters. So, a phase detector can tell exactly what the phase is on this point and thereby we can tune it exactly to f naught. Okay. So, you can just see this right delta omega from this is equal to okay, minus omega naught by 2 q okay, into delta phi. That means, a phase detector okay, if high q system is used a phase error of 1 percent for a q of 10 is going to be detected as 1 tenth. Okay, that means, higher q circuits you can see the frequency deviation more accurately with the phase detector using this principle. So, please remember this later when we would like to tune the circuit to exactly a specific frequency. Phase detector is to be used. Now, this F naught is equal to 1.99 Q equal to phi the transient response you can see the phi peaks in this simulation also. Now, what is done here is that uh, input of a square wave at F naught is fed. The filter is having resonance occurring at F naught and these are the different outputs. Okay. This is the output corresponding to the notch. So, the square wave comes without the fundamental because it has been tuned to F naught and F naught is the frequency at which the square wave comes. The fundamental is removed okay, because it is peaking at F naught. So, the fundamental component is removed that means square wave minus the fundamental. Fundamental is like this. Please remember that you have studied this for a square wave of V p the fundamental is 4 V p by pi that means fundamental amplitude is more than that of the square wave. So, if you subtract this you will get it as just this this will be reverse this will be reverse like this. So, you get this kind of thing after removing the fundamental. So, this is exactly tuned to uh, the incoming frequency of thought and this is the fundamental component which predominantly appears because is, it has a q of phi. That means, it is peaking with a gain of h naught into or k i into q right. k i is same as h naught that is okay, the center frequency uh, gain is h naught or k i okay, into q. the low pass frequency low frequency gain is h naught high pass high frequency gain is h naught and at omega naught gain is h naught into q that we will see when we look at the transfer function later. So, as far as the high pass output is concerned there is this sharp increase. So, it cannot remove the harmonics this is the effect due to the uh, odd harmonics present in the square wave. 
So, summation of effect of all the all harmonics is a jump. Whenever the square wave jumps, there is a jump. You can see the square wave jumping. That is, it produced both at the notch as well as the high pass. And that is removed from low pass and band pass because band low pass permits only the uh, fundamental and all the harmonics are removed and uh, band pass selects only the fundamental. Okay. So, this is the thing, this is the low pass and this is the band pass. They almost look alike except for a phase difference of 90 degrees. And between the uh, low pass and the high pass also there is a phase shift of 90 degrees. Okay. Simulation of second order filter with op amps at 15.9 kilohertz. So, the frequency is increased to 15.9 from 1.59, 10 times Q remains the same. Now, you will see the effect of the gain, gain magnitude product. This will quantitatively determine in the next class. However, you can see this difference. The frequency is almost the same 15.9 kilohertz from 1.59, 10 fold increase. However, the Q into H naught or Q into K i, Q is 5, this should have been 5. Whereas, it had remained 5 when we worked at 1.59, now it has changed over to 6.658. How does it change? Why should it increase like this? And the notch should have been 0, but there is 338 uh, milli, that is it should have been 1 at low frequency and high frequency and it should have been 0 at this point whereas there is a transmission of 0.338 occurring here. Why does it take place is what we are going to see in the next class right qualitatively. Now, you can see the effect of the Q has got enhanced that is what we saw in H naught into Q effect in the frequency response. It has gone to 6.6. Now, here the Q instead of showing 5 peaks as we saw earlier at low frequencies, it is showing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 almost uh, 7 peaks. Okay. So, the Q has got enhanced. A third order filter. Same procedure can be extended for any order, but we will see why this kind of extension using uh, this kind of methodology is not recommended for higher order filter design and how higher order filters can be designed using cascading of second orders and first order or only second orders, and right? it is safe. So, however, I am giving you a procedure. The third order differential is dependent upon the rest of the states this way. You put all these things on the right hand side along with the input just as before and use three integrators to get the lower states from the uh, third order okay. You get the lower states d v naught by d t square r c 1 by r c square d v naught by d t 1 by r c cube v naught. So, you sum up all this k naught, k 1, k 2 and k i for v i using a summing amplifier like this as before and get the output connected to the input which is solving the third order differential equation that is simulated. Now, we design a Butterworth filter using that actually k 1 and k 2 are appropriately chosen. So, that the coefficients here are 2 and 2. Okay. So, that is designed third order Butterworth. These equations are given in any book on filters or circuits analog circuits. So, a third order normalized uh, Butterworth design. So, that is simulated and you can that is done for same frequency 1.59 hertz maximally flat magnitude response 
both for low pass and high pass. This is the high pass output as before. This is going to be the low pass output. The uh, op amp realization involves five such uh, op amps in one loop and the other additions take place using this. So, we have here one, two, three integrators and the summing stage and the final inversion for the negative feedback. So, uh, this is the characteristic using op amps as the summing amplifiers and when we increase the frequency from 1.59 to 15.9 you can see the uh, high pass getting distorted considerably. The distortion in low pass is not visible it also is different from the theoretically predicted value. This is because of the effect of gain bandwidth product which we are going to investigate in the next class. So, this is the realization uh, that is when the same third order filter is realized using the above technique earlier mentioned technique with the frequency shifted further from 15.9 up to uh, f not equal to very nearly equal to 186 kilohertz close to the gain bandwidth product of the op amp the uh, maximally flat changes to this kind of ripple within the pass band indicating the effect of a higher order system. This is one sec, uh, first order low pass and this is a second order uh, low pass characteristic combined giving the third order effect because of the gain bandwidth product. And one can see that if you cascade second order with first order it almost retains the uh, general second order response of just speaking once ok. So, uh, this is the effect of a second order itself right even though the effect of gain bandwidth is seen as increased Q ok for the second order. So, the peak is increased otherwise it should have been maximally flat. So, these are the observations one can make higher even order filters can be realized by cascading second order filters higher odd order filter is realized using cascading first order with second order this is the easy method of design that is why the second order universal active filter is a basic building block in most of the filter designs and it is available as an IC later on identify the ICs that are available as these building blocks. Direct realization uh, greater than 3 using op amps will lead to inferior performance due to the cumulative phase error in the feedback loop. So, this is uh, normally avoided in most of the feedback loops higher order. Outputs at different points in a second order filter. So, let us now go back to the original circuit with uh, 3 op amps in a loop double integrator loop and we see V not 1 by V i this is what we had derived earlier is the high pass filter H not into S square by omega naught square divided by S square by omega naught square plus S by omega naught q plus 1 high pass filter ok. So, this is the characteristic that we had already seen and uh, it is close to 5 you can see at 1.59 uh, uh, which is 1.6 kilohertz and it is becoming equal to 1 at very high frequency this is the high pass output. So, H naught is equal to 1 in our circuit that we had shown earlier H naught is equal to 1, H naught is same as K i. So, this is same as this 
this is q times r that q has been adjusted to be 5 and this is same as this makes k i equal to 1 or h not equal to 1. So, that is what has been chosen in this characteristic. So, that is depicted here this is h naught into q phi. So, it fits with the theory exactly. This is the band pass filter output you can see that characteristic is it is speaking at exactly f naught which is 1.591 and h naught into q is 4.949 same as what we have expected and it goes to 0 on either side this is the characteristic of the band pass. This is the low pass h naught by this and uh, at frequencies low frequencies it is h naught which is 1 in this case at omega equal to omega naught it is h naught into q that we will see. So, this is nearly equal to 1 and this is going to be 1.569 okay slightly reduced to because of the low pass action it is peaking is always at a lower frequency than omega f naught okay for the high pass it is slightly at a higher frequency than f naught only for band pass it is exactly at f naught. So, these are the observations that we have made as far as the notch is concerned okay this is the output at the fourth op amp okay and h naught into 1 plus s squared by omega naught square indicating 0 transmission at omega equal to omega naught i is equal to 0 because of this and it is supposed to peak the peak is killed at that point okay because it is getting multiplied by 0. So, normally something that was peaking at low pass high pass band pass that is suppressed because of the 0 of transmission. So, the high q filter has a 0 of transmission and it becomes like that. That means with increasing q it is going to be q like this. This is what we will see here. So, this is for a q of 5 and if you increase the q further later on see that it is going to become narrower and this point at which transmission should be 0 is not exactly 0 it is uh, about 12 milli that means this is 1 this is 0 0.012 okay transmission. So, it is not yet gone to 0. Why it has not gone to 0 is something that we are going to investigate because of the active device finite gain or gain bandwidth product. So, both affect this 0 okay Let's see. and this has gone to nearly 1 994 992 on this side. So, that is notch output. By adding V naught 1 to V naught 2 and V naught 3, V naught 1 is uh, high pass, this is high pass, this is uh, V naught 2 is band pass with the negative sign, this is the low pass. So, alpha 1 is positive, alpha 3 is positive, alpha 2 is negative you get a s squared plus b s plus c you can make add it as positive or negative or 0 depending upon which output you take and add okay and we can locate the 0 of this polynomial anywhere on the s plane whereas the poles are always located on the right half because q is positive okay and therefore pole in the s plane the poles of this system will always lie on the left half plane okay as complex conjugate pair or on the negative real axis but the zeros can lie anywhere on the s plane as complex conjugate pairs okay 
or on the negative or positive rail axis. So, that is the facility of a generalized synthesis and for example, a wall pass filter design requires that what is an all pass filter? The magnitude of this should remain independent of frequency that means it should be equal to H naught at all frequencies. So, and only the phase should change. So, for that it is enough if you make the odd ones have negative polarity as far as the coefficient is concerned compared to the uh, denominator. So, that means if the poles are like this on the left top plane for stability you have to have all poles always located on the left top plane. Zeros can be just mirror image of poles that is the pole, loca pole zero location for an all pass filter always any order right. You might have the poles like this then the zeros should be exactly like this mirror image. This is for higher order. This for the second order it is like this. So, then magnitude is H naught at all frequencies phase is going to be contributing lag here by this much amount and another lag by this turning to minus. So, minus 2 tan inverse omega by omega naught q 1 minus omega by omega naught square and if you actually obtain the delay function delta phi by delta omega minus ok that will be actually uh, maximally flat that maximally flat delay function ok type of filters are called Thomson's filter this I had mentioned earlier ok and that maximum flatness occurs for a q of 1 by root 3 for a second order system that you can prove by taking delta phi by delta omega and making it maximally flat. Delta phi by delta omega will be having uh, the omega by omega naught function ok coming out as uh, this uh, 1 plus omega by omega naught squared divided by uh, omega by omega naught to the power 4 plus uh, what is that minus 2 plus 1 over q squared this please derive it squared plus 1. So, you have to for maximum flatness the coefficient of omega squared by omega naught squared should be same as that of the uh, numerator. So, 1 is equal to minus 2 plus 1 over q square or q is equal to 1 over root 3 that is the Thomson's filter. So, this is an all pass filter design that gives you only delay and it is used as a delay compensating mechanism right it does not affect the amplitude it only affects the phase. So, this is the phase characteristic for q equal to 1 q equal to 1 its uh, amplitude characteristic will be constant h naught 1 throughout. So, in conclusion we have covered a uh, systematic method of synthesis of state variable filters and we, we have obtained the circuit of uh, what is called universal active filter block. Why is it called universal active filter block? It is a double integrator block or a resonator block with Q forming loop separately ok. By taking the combination of low pass plus high pass plus band pass outputs available one can formulate any second order system with specific omega naught and q which is sufficient to derive any nth order filter ok required for any application that is why it is called universal. So, with uh, facility of one more adder one can add this 
uh, alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 kind of outputs and obtain a generalized second order system with zeros located anywhere on the S plane and poles located only on the left top plane as complex conjugate pair or on the negative real axis which obtain stable filter systems for use. It also seen that if Q of the resonator block is I mean Q of the system is made infinity it becomes a double integrator oscillator which oscillates at omega naught that is why it is called a resonator block or a double integrator loop. So, in the next class we will see that this double integrator loop is really similar to inductor getting simulated across the capacitor forming a tank circuit just like the inductor simulation filters right. So, it is no different from the inductor simulation circuit that we had discussed earlier topologically it looks different from the gyrator this will be established in the next class. Thank you very much.